So the state worked with the Coast Guard and uh, we put together uh, a state after action report um, as well as a, a federal on-scene coordinators after action report. And I think Robert will probably talk about the after action report that came from um, uh, Santa Barbara County as well. Um, these are very wordy slides. Um, I just wanted to give you a sense of some of our lessons learned, some of our best practices, and where we, where we see ourselves going from here, okay? You probably all know that OSPR has the primary authority and responsibility for responding to oil spills throughout the state of California that impact waters of the state. So this impacted marine waters. Um, we are the trustee agency uh, which you heard um, uh, Ms. Yee talk about uh, this morning, and, or actually it was probably uh, Jennifer Lucchese that was talking about what public doctrine means. And what that meant for us, for the department, is that we hold and trust all the fish, all the wildlife, everything for you as the people of California. So when we're doing spill response, we're doing the response part of it, but we're also doing what you see here on the bottom, which is natural resource damage assessment. That's the, how do you put the environment back together, which is not typically a part of response. It's sort of separate, as is the investigation. So OSPR has three primary roles in spill response. One is as the state on-scene coordinator, the other is as a trustee agency, and then the third, which is outside of response as well, uh, is the investigation of what has been violated in state law, and what does that mean for us. In spill response, um, and I think I have it on the next slide, it's probably a better slide to look at. Um, of course, you can all read that exactly. But, uh, but all of the boxes that you see that are shaded out are boxes that were held by uh, OSPR folks. So state on scene coordinator, deputy public safety officer, liaison officer, cost recovery down here, deputy operations, wildlife operations, everything that goes on in wildlife, GIS, volunteers, documentation. Environmental unit leader is a role that we always take in everything that comes underneath that. Identifying resources at risk, shoreline cleanup assessment, all the sampling coordination, any what we call applied response technologies, any shoreline cleaning agents, any new technologies falls under that category as well. And tribal should be in here somewhere and I'm just not seeing it. It should be there, it's not there, but it should be there. And uh, Michael will talk a lot more about that. Okay, so here, here starts a crazy wordy slide. So you can like phase your head out and listen to me or you can just close your eyes and listen to me or you can just sit there. Um, but uh, uh, Oscar Refugio uh, evaluation report, we broke it down into things that, that we saw as successful that could lead to best practices. Uh, we had really good interagency cooperation amongst the other state agencies as well as the federal agency and you heard Ron talk a little bit about state parks. Uh, they sat in with us as the unified command, even though they, they themselves were not an incident commander. They owned a lot of land and they knew that area really, really well, and so that was really beneficial. Um, we had very effective and strategic um, on location support from um, our own folks within the Department of Fish and Wildlife, as well as um, OSPR executives. Uh, we did a community open house. Um, we had about 200 people who were there. Um, it was very, very successful. You'll also see in a later slide, we held it on day 11. I think we would like to look at something that would happen a little bit earlier in the future. Um, we had a good response in uh, ensuring that tribal training and participation happened as a part of shoreline cleanup. Uh, prompt fisheries closure, and it took a little while to get there. Okay, so as you often know, some of the things that you figure out how to do on the fly also become things for you to work on in the future. And that was probably by week three-ish, maybe Tom, week four-ish, um, we had regular meetings to update the non-governmental organizations. So once a week, we hopped onto a conference line. The director of the Department of Fish and Wildlife was on that line. Um, since it's the responsibility of the state on-scene coordinator to take in local input um, to, to hold those uh, responsibilities, uh, this was something that we did and then fed that information back to the Unified Command. Okay, there were 63 separate recommendations um, organized by the different units that we had within the command. Key recommendations, um, increase education efforts and information sharing with local governments and NGO before this still happens. Uh, we had a hot wash, OSPR had a hot wash with several of the local NGOs 
and we'll be folding that information as well as those folks into one of the subcommittees for the area committee here in LALB. I was talking to Captain Downey about it last week, um, and it's a really good opportunity because what became real apparent for those of us who were working directly with the NGOs is they had a lot of good information, they had a lot of good volunteers, they had a lot of great ideas. What they didn't have, what they didn't understand was the nature of the unified command and an emergency response. And how, how things are, how, what a joint information center really means, you know. When they want to have information yesterday, what does that really mean? And, and how can they best integrate into the future so that they know what to expect, but we can also rely upon them to be able to send information out to their folks so that the NGOs are getting information from their known NGO representatives as opposed to somebody from the state or the federal government who they don't really know very well. Um, one of the things that came out was a liaison officer is a public agency representative. So that would be the head liaison officer, whether that was a state person, a federal person, a local person, but that a lot of the other agency representatives um, felt that they thought that the, liaison, the lead liaison officer should be another governmental agency. Uh, we are in the process of developing an electronic shoreline assessment data management system. So what that means is you're out on the beach and you gather all this information electronically and you can beam it to Judd who can download it and you don't lose that time bringing the information back into the command post to get ready for operations the next day. Um, Cindy will talk about this more in, in depth, I'm assuming, or maybe not, um, but uh, since I kept her time, um, is that uh, we, you know, Cindy is awesome, but Cindy is one person. And she, in the last few years, have been training of, of other folks within OSPR to help work with that volunteer unit. And we had applications from a thousand people. And so you can put on three or four different trainings and have the da 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 da, -da which Cindy is gonna talk a lot more about. And so what that meant for us is, you know, again, Cindy is one person. And so we need to have greater depth of field within OSPR to deal with uh, volunteers. And Michael will talk about this as well. I think we did an excellent job of integrating tribes, but again, Nothing works better than preparedness, right? So that, so that we know who these tribal folks are, we understand how to integrate them in, we have our own policies and procedures for how we do this. We made it work on the fly, as all professionals do, but it's better to have it down in policy and train that way during drills and exercises. Okay, lessons learned, more li trained liaison officers, um, uh, volunteer plan for non-oiled wildlife volunteers, more comprehensive oil spill notification. So this was all lessons learned after Costco Busan, okay? Because I think somebody mentioned it earlier, you know, we learn something from every spill, right? But we learn it and then we have to implement it because learning it isn't enough. <laughs> you need to fold it into what informs your next uh, event. So we did, so this was a slide that we provided for uh, the legislature as well. Things that we had, things that came out as lessons learned after Costco Busan and allowed the FIGIO to go better, right? So we learned new lessons, we just didn't learn these lessons, right? So we already had a non-wildlife volunteer plan. We had more trained liaison officers. We were using IRMA, and Jed will talk about this a little bit as a common operating picture. One of the things that came out of Costco Busan is a lot of local governments didn't get notified directly from OES because that's not how OES was doing it. And so now local governments get notified directly by OES about something that's going on in their jurisdiction. We have boom grants now because there's a lot of, in our response, it goes by public health and safety first, then the environment, then economic. Okay, so an example of economic might be your wharf <laughs> or, or where your sailboats are moored. Okay, so for us, that's not an environmental concern, but for local governments, that is an important concern for them. And so we will go out and boom them eventually after we get through all of our environmental concerns. So we developed this boom grant for local government so that they could go out and boom their economic concerns before we would probably get to them as we're going through the queue of our environmental. Okay, and I'm probably getting close to time. Yes, Cindy? Two minutes. Oh, I have two whole minutes. Um, so uh, we also, after Costco Busan, uh, uh, worked uh, really <coughs> diligently with our counterparts in the department um, to do better coordination of utilizations of assets. Um, 
in regular terms, what that meant was we were able to integrate department folks uh, significantly in our fisheries closure and both monitoring the closure, going out and doing samples, et cetera, et cetera, because Oscar, although we're small and we're mighty, we are small, right? And so we, we don't have 100 boats that can go out there and do those types of things. So those are just some general, uh, you'll get more specifics uh, below me, but this is uh, where you can find the report. Uh, it came out in May as well, and I think that's my last slide. So any other clarifying questions about what I've just covered? Okay, so if I can have the person to come up and do our next slide, I'm going to.